So what brought you back? I felt like I wasn't done and I felt like I really struggled with not winning. As in, like uncontrollable. You were offered the Miss Universe New Zealand title, right? And you said no. Why was that? I don't know if you know, but my initials aren't actually VVB. They're... Hey guys, welcome back to Mic Drop, a new series where we talk to inspiring individuals about their inspiring stories. My name is Aine Bernos, and today I have a very special guest. We have over here Miss VVV herself, Victoria Velasquez Vincent, who is Miss Universe Philippines Bacoora City for this year. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited to chat because it's been three years mm -hmm. since your last pageantry stint. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to MUPH 2021. Mm -hmm. So how has life been since then? Life has been beautiful. I'll be honest, at first, after, I won't say losing, I'll say not winning. It was hard. It was very hard, especially being sort of isolated from my family for a while because I have my COVID pa. Yeah, it was hard, but then I ended up having a lot of really wonderful opportunities come my way. Ones that I couldn't turn down despite accepting them, meaning having to leave the Philippines. I really feel like everything sort of rolled out the way that it was meant to. And even being here now, I look back on the decision decisions that I've made over the past few years in Australia and I'm like yeah no I, I definitely made the right decisions at those times like even the most minor thing from like you know not getting a dog while I was living in Australia because that would mean that you know coming back here would be a little bit more difficult so yeah just those like minor life decisions they all sort of made sense and make sense. So what brought you back? I think that's the biggest question a lot of people are asking. Like, first of all, surprise, ginulat mo kami. But what made you decide that? Yeah, I'll be honest. After 2021 and over the past couple of years, I never thought I would be here again. Uh, there were two main things that I think were getting in my way of coming back. One of which was fear. Uh, I already sort of feared failure. But even after... The perspective that I had at the time was that I had failed. I see it a little bit di more differently now, but fear, fearing, I guess, failing again. But then also sort of my ego of like just trying again after I've failed. Uh, those were the two main things that were getting in my way. And then also the fact that I was building a really great life for myself in Australia. And I was kind of like partway between New Zealand and the Philippines. So I had the freedom to go back and forth as I chose. And yeah, so... Long story short, I had no idea that I was going to be here today. But thanks to some individuals that sort of never gave up on me and never gave up on sort of showing that they weren't going to give up on me, I'm here. And I think a lot of us have probably heard before one common factor between a lot of successful people is the fact that they've got at least one person that, mm -hmm. you know, relentlessly believes in them. And I am blessed enough to have so many of those people who have sort of all all backed me in my decision to come back so yeah really grateful so speaking of individuals i wanted to ask and again asking the questions everybody's wondering about mm -hmm. what made you switch to aces and queens because i i realized that this time around you're competing with a different camp mm -hmm. what's that like i'm just starting to get into training with aces and queens i've kind of been hiding in cebu for a little <laughs> while but long story short, going back to those individuals that played a huge role in me coming back in the first instance, uh, two of them were Mami Fern Amato, who was my designer back in 2021, and then also Swen Chua, who is the head of Origin Management, who some people may or may not know was also the manager of Bea at the time. And I met Swen at Bea's send-off party, and I did not look cute that day. <laughs> Yeah, I just I wasn't confident in the way that I looked. I just didn't wasn't yeah, <laughs> satisfied. I suppose it's not my best day. But still, Swen came up to me and he was like, V, if you ever choose to join again, we back you and we want to be your team. So that kind of stuck with me. And then Swen, Mummy Fern and I have always kept in contact and they've always sort of, you know, trying to nudge me in the direction of pageantry again. But as I said, I was building a beautiful life for myself. So I was like, no, like I'm not interested you know, it's time to close that chapter and move on. But then, oh my gosh, so embarrassing. I was watching Miss Universe 2023 where Champagne and Michelle D was competing. And you know, at the start when they say their name and their country and it's just like, I don't know, the vibes are just really high and it's all in alphabetical order depending on the country. Uh, I literally got up to like Argentina, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's probably like country number three or four. 
as in like uncontrollably I remember sitting in my lounge I was watching on my laptop because I didn't know how to get on my TV and I was just like crying because I felt like I felt like I wasn't done and I felt like even though I didn't necessarily win the crown the first time round there was a reason for that even though I didn't see it at the time so side story I've always been very religious, but over the past few years, I've connected more and more with my spiritual side and more and more with my relationship with God. The best way that I can explain it is, you know, when God puts a plan in place for you, you can try and like wiggle your way out of it. You can try and avoid it as much as you can, but, you know, he's still going to be nudging you back onto the path that you are meant to be on. And I feel like that yeah, it's the best way for me to explain it is nothing tangible. It's just a, a feeling, I suppose. And I remember that in 2021, you had this opportunity. I mean, this isn't like the second time you're going to have the opportunity to represent a country in Miss Universe. Mm. At one point after our competition in 2021, you were offered the Miss Universe New Zealand title, right? Mm. And you said no. I remember your post about this. Why was that? Yeah, you know, there were so many preconceived ideas. Perhaps my my uh, caption wasn't as good as it could have been, <laughs> um, although it did take me like two hours to write. Yeah, people had a lot of preconceived ideas. People either thought that I was ungrateful for the country that I was born and raised in, which is 100% not the case. You know, I know how blessed I am to have been born and raised in such a, you know, just like a progressive country. And then uh, people also thought that Maybe I was trying to prove something by, because, you know, the most common basher comment that I received throughout the whole journey was that I wasn't Filipino enough. So people were under the impression that I was trying to prove that I was, which wasn't the case at all. The way that I see it and the way that I saw it at the time and the way that I dissected it with the people who I love most being my parents, even though I didn't win Miss Universe Philippines, I still won a title and the title was Miss Universe Philippines Charity. That title, I did not take lightly, even though I didn't get to compete internationally. Going back to the whole reason why I joined in the first place and the reason that I am joining again is for our people, you know, to, to stand for what I believe in and, for, and to advocate for all the things that I hold dear to my heart. And I just feel like if I were to accept Miss Universe New Zealand on a whim just to be able to compete internationally, that was going to be so out of alignment with why I even joined pageantry in the first place. Yes, it would have given me a platform, but you know how they say saying yes to one thing means saying no to something else? Saying yes to Miss Universe New Zealand would mean giving up my title as Miss Universe Philippines Charity. And again, even though I didn't win, that title still meant so much to me. And that was the core reason why I turned it down. As grateful as I was for being offered the opportunity, yeah, I, I just. I couldn't say no to the title that I was blessed to be given, you know. That's amazing. I mm. I didn't realize it was that, but that's that's how, that's how good to hear. And I'm so glad that you get to have another chance at getting that title, mm. that other one. <laughs> <laughs> the big one. Yeah, the big one. <laughs> okay, speaking of criticism, mm -hmm. this was a, I feel like as beauty queens, no, but as beauty queens, I, a big part of that experience is dealing with the criticism. Mm. And I guess as soon as you announced it, again, again, there's always something. How are you dealing with it now in 2024 versus when we were competing in 2021? Well, first of all, I'm so grateful that they increased the age limit because I look back on my 25, 26, because I turned a year older during the competition. I look back on my younger self and I'm like, wow, I was not ready to thrust myself into this world. And over the past three years, I've done so much introspection. I've become so much more self aware and I've come to the understanding that I really just shouldn't take anything personally. And I, I learned that in my professional career as well, because everything is sort of like interchangeable. Yeah, I, I just, I really just don't take anything personally. At the end of the day, my bashers are someone else's fans, right? And that doesn't excuse the negativity. It doesn't excuse the unkindness. But I guess putting like an explanation behind it mm -hmm. just eases the pain a little bit. I don't tend to read too many comments. And I'm really lucky where my comment section is actually a really safe space and it always has been. I just every now and then someone will comment on like a pageant blogger's post about me saying something mean and tag me so that I have to see it in my notifications. <laughs> 
but that's okay. Again, I just don't take anything personally. You know, people's opinions are exactly that, and that doesn't make it true. Yeah, someone could have the opinion that uh, I'm a dog. That doesn't make me a dog. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that's the best example I could come up with. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, opinion mm-hmm. is, a, is opinion, and yeah, people people can be unkind, and that isn't okay, but that's just life, I suppose. Ever since you came back, there's been like a bunch of stuff around this and we love i love you yell. <laughs> maybe just to clarify because i know like we talked about this also like what's going on inside our head and mm-hmm. how we're dealing with our journey mm-hmm. publicly so like mm-hmm. yeah maybe you can expound on it was brought to my attention the reasoning behind one of the pageant pages being for the philippines um not posting or reposting my video after i announced that I was coming back. To be honest, I, at first I didn't think anything of it because I didn't take it personally. You know, at the end of the day, that's someone's personal Instagram page. Mm-hmm. It's your prerogative whether you want to post someone or not. That's fine. But something that really doesn't sit well with me is my team told me that, you know, because I expected myself to get bashed, but my team told me that for the Philippines and Oyal, who was the individual behind the page, is being bashed because because they he didn't want to post me. Okay, side story. I work in construction, right? And health and safety on construction sites is very important. And there's a saying where the standard that you walk past is the standard that you accept, right? So whether like the construction site is like unsafe or messy or whatever. And I try to apply that to sort of everything that I do. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, if I were to just ignore, because, you know, I feel like Dedma is like the expectation in a lot of cases, but I, I don't necessarily agree with being all Dedma all the time. Because you still have to stand for something, right? And in this case, I don't want to just be all deadma about it because the standard that you are deadma about is the standard that you're accepting. And I do not in any in any form tolerate or accept or, you know, encourage any kind of bashing. We know firsthand what it's like to have mean things said about us. And in no circumstances is it acceptable. And knowing that Oyal or for the Philippines are being bashed just for not posting my video is really upsetting to me. And I think I just want to encourage everyone to fully understand that, first of all, it's my prerogative to follow or unfollow whoever I choose to based on, you know, my emotional or mental state at the time, which we'll I'll circle back to. And it's other people's prerogative to post or not post, you know, yeah. and that's fine. Yeah. I don't take it personally. No one else should take it personally. It's fine. Like just chill out. It Everyone shouldn't just be chill a big out. Deal. It literally, it shouldn't be a big deal. So as much as I appreciate people, you know, in their own way supporting me, that shouldn't be at the detriment of someone else. You know, it shouldn't be yeah. it shouldn't be through bashing someone else. And just to address, because I think a lot of people have noticed me unfollowing a lot of pageant pages since 2021. I just want people to understand, and you know firsthand, I know some of the girls in our batch did the same thing because it was really hard, especially like it was a pandemic at the time, right? So that made it all the more harder because we were like isolated as well from everyone. I really struggled with not winning, especially because, like I said, it was pandemic at the time. Our pageant was like September. New Zealand didn't open up their borders until the March after that. So I went a full six months hurting by myself without being able to hug my mom or hug my dad. And so at the time, the decision that I made to unfollow pageant pages and even other beauty queens that I didn't know personally was simply just to preserve my mental health and create a safe space for myself on social media because I think I owed that to myself after everything that I had put myself through because at the end of the day it was all my decision yes I acknowledge that but yeah it it all comes down to me creating a safe space for myself online and you know I apologize if people took that personally I I apologize if it came across the wrong way I apologize if it came across as ungrateful because I know that so many pageant pages supported this little newbie in 2021 but by no means was there any bad intention i was just trying to preserve my peace you know with that context it's really understandable especially at that time when it was so fresh and you can only do so much mm. you can only do so much in the middle of the pandemic alone you know mm. sometimes it's also survival it really isn't easy and i, I know a lot of people glamorize being here and it Mm. is a fun thing Mm. it's so fun it's a privilege but at the end of the day taking care of your mental health and 
doing what's best for you. Sometimes that's what it costs. So this year, 2024, <laughs> I'm so excited. As a pageant fan, like this year has been dubbed All Stars, Dubbing Blood up. Bath, mm -mm. Bardagulan, <laughs> Extraordinaire. Everything now because so it's like Miss Universe. Like it's not even Miss Universe <laughs> Philippines. Honestly, like <laughs> at this point, if I can have MUPH 2024 can watch that. Okay, now. Mm. I don't think I need to watch Miss Universe. Mm. This is this, this is my is Miss Universe. <laughs> the event of the year. <laughs> it is. How do you feel? Did you know how many of the all stars are coming back? Or like, did you just, how was the thought process and how are you taking this whole situation? It's actually overwhelming, but like in a good way. To answer your question, no, I, I had no idea about all of these pageant veterans coming back. I still don't, like, even though I competed before, I don't see myself as a pageant veteran and I still see myself as like a little pageant newbie. But yeah, because I was so removed from the pageant world for such a long time. I didn't hear any of the, like the rumors or like the anything. And so I had no idea what I was coming into. I just made the call to come back. But it's exciting and I'm excited to meet everyone. You know, some people that I'm like huge fans of myself. To be honest, I don't really watch like full pageants, mm. but like I obviously see clips online. So like, for example, Stacey Gabriel, goodness me, the girl can speak. So I'm like excited to meet her, even Athisa, who obviously competed internationally and did an incredible job. And then also, you know, the other girls that might not have like the the background or for lack of a better term, like the fame associated with them, just getting to meet other girls. Because like in our year, as much as I loved our year and our mm -hmm. badge, it was so different because we didn't get to like mingle with each other. We had to stay in our rooms just yeah. in case one of us got COVID and then we spread it to everyone else. Deva. Like it wasn't even until after until I started <laughs> yeah. talking to everyone and like, meeting everyone. I feel like I met VVV in Bohol after <laughs> the coronation. <laughs> in that one corner room <laughs> by the pool. <laughs> that was my room, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, we sleep overnight. So it was so much fun. fun. So I, I'm really looking forward to just like connecting with the girls and just like being able to meet them in person. Yeah, yeah. and you'll have a crowd this time. Can you yeah. imagine? You're gonna be walking with people cheering, and <laughs> yeah. not just us. Yeah. <laughs> no. Time not in Thailand, like cheering. Yeah, it's, 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 just cheering it's, for each other. Grand. It was such a different time, but I think that's what made it so special. Also, so now that with all the changes, we have, of course, age limit. Now we get to compete. Technically, we're not like the. <laughs> no, I mean, you get to compete. Mm. 28 used to be the oldest you yeah. could be. I would have aged out by now, too. Yeah. Mm. Imagine. Good job, Miss so old. <laughs> but now it's open. There's no pressure mm -hmm. for women to join when they're not ready just to reach a limit. Yeah. In the last year, mothers and married women also started competing. What do you think about all that? I appreciate how... I mean, first of all, the fact that Miss Universe is opening up this platform to all types of women, but also the fact that Miss Universe Philippines is following suit. Because, I mean, just because Miss Universe is doesn't mean that Miss Universe Philippines has to, right? So, yeah, I appreciate that. I, I'm inspired by the likes of Ma'am Joyce, who competed in yeah. Miss Universe QC. And I totally understand, even though we're still from different age groups, the, I watched a few interviews with her and I think Louis Pratelis. And the way she speaks about, you know, how her life experiences, she's got so much to share. And I mean, I already feel like in the past three years, I've had so many more life experiences that I have to share. What more, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For her. And then even just opening up the platform to, to women who have kids or are married, because I mean, I never fully understood why women were put into this box and expected to be a certain way, look a certain way, have achieved certain things, but not other things. So just opening up the floor to everyone, I can really appreciate. Yeah. And I'm excited because, I mean, I don't know for certain, but I can imagine that there are older women, there are women with kids, there are women that are married that I will be competing with. And I look forward to learning from them. But pageantry is evolving super mm -hmm. quickly, especially I think in the last five years, like umbilis nang changes. Is there anything else you can think of that you can change? Or like, is there anything oh. else to be changed? This might just be coincidence, but there are some pageants where although the floor is open to everyone. There's not necessarily a winner or someone in the top five, at least, that are part of that 
group of yeah. you know people whether it's you know people that fall below the standard height restriction or you know the that fall above like the previous age limit or even just like in terms of different body sizes and stuff i appreciate that the floor is open but i would like to see higher placements for those people where it's deserved you know because i i don't think you can put an age limit, a marital status, or you know, a waistline size on someone's ability to make an impact at all. That's so true. I'm I'm glad you brought that up because I, I did hear from someone. It's different to allow someone to compete mm -hmm. and tolerate them competing versus actually considering them as deserving. And I mm -hmm. realize now looking back, yes, that that's so true. Mm. that's so true i mean i've heard it a lot that it's great that she's there like speaking from experience like the height thing it's good that she's there mm. but that doesn't mean we need to send her like yeah. that kind of stuff mm. not saying i need to be sent i'm <laughs> fine where i am <laughs> okay lang ako. but you know that's that's so true it's different yeah. to be allowed and yeah. different to be considered mm. Mm, i yeah. love that i think it speaks about the the culture of pageantry in the philippines too because like at the end of the day how we see beauty queens dictates that. Yeah, at the end of the day, we're role models, right? So I remember all the things that you stood for when you competed and you mm. really like forged this incredible pathway for mm. the girls that compete now. I think about the way that you competed and all the things that you stood for. And, you know, I remember, I genuinely remember seeing comments of other more petite girls that have darker skin where they were actually saying like, Ate Ayin, Ate Grobe, <laughs> Ate Ayin, you've actually inspired me to do this or that. And I think, yeah, what more if it was someone that was, you know, actually like crowned, right? It would, it would open up you know, dreams for people. That's why I love watching pageantry, not just because of the show itself or how glamorous it is, but I like seeing the evolution, like just mm. comparing this edition to 2021 or like even before that. It's like, wow, it represents how we're changing. And it's so nice mm. to be a part of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So speaking of things that we stand for, there's mm. so many. During your run in 2021, you talked a lot about heritage conservation. Is that something that you still want to highlight? this time around or is there something else i've done a lot of internalizing and introspection over the past couple of years i i came to realize and i i want to circle back actually to my answer which i didn't actually watch the pageant like our pageant you didn't until you until haven't I, watched it until i decided to come back i was like mm. I should probably join. I love your answer. I should answer. probably watch. <laughs> I love your answer. Um, so I saw clips of my answers mm -hmm. and like clips of my performance, but I never watched the whole thing in its entirety. I didn't want to be triggered. <laughs> I watch it every day. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and I think back to that answer. I said something along the lines of, I can't remember what the question was, but I said something along the lines of, you know, although I haven't had to go through that many difficult things in my life, I can still, I think I said something like resonate with people who have and stand for those people through my advocacy, blah, blah, blah. And just that line where I said, you know, I haven't been through that many hard things in my life. I even look at that now and I'm like, girl, you belittle everything that you've been through. You know, even though I came from, you know, a, for lack of a better term, a privileged background in comparison to some people, I have been through some really difficult things in life, including, you know, an abusive relationship, which was really hard. I don't know if you know, but my initials aren't actually VVV, they're KVVV. Um, <laughs> Wait, <you're> sorry, like, <laughs> you blew my mind. What? Okay. Yeah, this is about to be a really long interview. And I'll circle back to your question about advocacy, but this is all leading up to it. So my full name is Kim Victoria Velasquez Vinson. But when I started architecture school, I met someone who was very charming at the time. I'm sure you know the type. And then we ended up being together for like four years. But it was like only a couple months into the relationship where things got very messy and physical violence was involved. But it, it also became very hard for me to leave because of, you know, the emotional manipulation, I'll call it. And so, yeah, that was only a couple months in. But then four years down the track, I finally managed to escape from it. So up until the end of that relationship, my name was Kim. Like, who's Victoria? I mean, it was part of my first name. My first name is Kim Victoria, but everyone called me Kim. 
But after that, I really wanted to disassociate myself from who I was when I accepted that level of disrespect because I didn't want to be that person anymore. I didn't want to accept that level of disrespect. Even I, not legally, but just in terms of my own life, I removed the Kim from my name and I asked my friends and family not to call me that anymore. And I, I was known by the second part of my first name, which is Victoria. And it just so happened to fit perfectly with my branding in 2021. But it was kind of like a unconscious decision. Yeah, I just wanted to disassociate from that. So anyways, my answer in 2021 was belittling the things that I've been through. And I don't want to do that anymore. There's also a very raw part of my early life that I will dive into throughout the journey, which is also something that I'm very passionate about. And so long story short, or long story long. I don't want to just choose one advocacy this year, even though I'm so passionate about architecture and heritage conservation, and it it so perfectly aligns with pageantry and the things that I want to get out of it or mm. the impact that I want to have through it. There are also other elements like advocating against human and child trafficking or advocating against domestic violence against women, children, or even men, because let's be honest, it happens to all people. And then even to this, like the less heavier things, I guess you could call it from, you know, the fact that I'm plant-based most of the time, except I really love eggs, so I can't give those up. I'm, I'm plant-based for a few reasons. First of all, animal cruelty, but then also animal farming is a huge contributor to climate change. So a bit of an environmental warrior at the same time. So yeah, this time around, I, I really want to show that it's not about choosing an advocacy. It's about highlighting and fighting for the things that I believe in. I love how in the last few years that you've been away from pageantry, mm. you've grown into even more so your own person mm. and that you're coming back as even more VVV if that was possible, you know? Yeah. And it's amazing because, and this is a from a conversation that I had with Madame Pia, where it's back herself. She was saying, but it's something else when you are able to solidify your identity and mm. then compete. Yeah. It really makes a difference. And I'm so, so happy to see you come back as that girl. I feel like in, like in a way, you being away kind of, removed you from the mold if that makes yeah. sense like parang pageant patty gone like the rules are gone mm. and now you're just you and i feel like that's such an exciting thing to watch happen yeah thank you i um when i moved to melbourne i had never been to melbourne really because I, I i was offered an incredible opportunity with a company that i am so grateful for but yeah, I had never been there even for like a layover or anything like that. I also didn't know anyone there, but it became a really great opportunity for me to redefine who I was because I didn't know anyone and nobody knew me. Mm -hmm. So I could literally choose to be whoever I wanted to be and sort of align myself better with, with who I know that I'm meant to be. That's amazing. So just to wrap this up, what kind of Victoria should people expect? come coronation night the main thing for me is i am so much more self-aware than i was back then and i think because of that self-awareness i'm so much more open to comments and constructive criticism and just learning to incorporate the feedback of others because at the end of the day i don't see myself as a pageant veteran I was a pageant newbie in 2021. I have experience now, but not to the point I'd call myself a veteran. I still have so much to learn and my openness to learn very much there. But other than that, you'll have to stay tuned. <laughs> oh my gosh. I cannot wait for all the pasabogs. But more importantly, I can't wait to watch you on stage with the crowd this time around. And I wish you the best on your journey as Miss Universe Philippines. Bako or Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for being here again. Thank and thank you, you guys so much for watching. Mm -hmm. Kita kids. Kita kids. Mm -hmm.